Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So in today's episode, I want to talk about how to avoid losses in trading. So here's the thing, right? There is no one method that will guarantee you to have, you know, 100% zero losses. It doesn't work that way, right? The closest thing that you can do is to trade without stops, but it's only a matter of time, right, before the market reverse so much against you that you blow up your trading account. So clearly that method is not viable. So in today's trading, right, I want to share with you four techniques, right, that you can use to avoid losses, right? It will not eradicate your losses totally, but it should reduce the frequency of it, right? So number one, don't chase breakouts. I know it's tempting to chase breakouts, right? You know, oh, right now, look how bullish the chart is, right? So so strong, the candles are so green, right? It's, it's time to buy, buy, buy. But the problem with doing that is uh, two problems. Number one, Whenever you chase breakouts, right, that's when the market is about to make a reversal or a pretty strong pullback. Just look at Bitcoin, for example, right, when it made its uh, meteoric rise to $20,000. If you look at the price point around the $50,000, $17,000 price point, the candles are so huge, it's so bullish. right? And many traders will think that that is the right time to buy. But the problem with it is that the market has moved too fast, too soon, and it's you know, very ripe right, for a strong pullback or even a reversal altogether. That's the first problem. Second thing is that there is no logical place for you to set your stop loss. If you look at the chart of Bitcoin at that point in time, you realize that there is no logical place to set your stop loss, right? The nearest stop loss, right, if you're going to, you know, reference it from the previous swing low, it's like, what, six, $7,000 away. And I don't think any traders want to, you know, withstand, right, a six, $7,000 stop loss of Bitcoin, right? Because if you think about this, let's say your stop loss is $5,000, this means, right, for the market to move a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio in your favor, you need the market to move five thousand dollars away from your entry price, and that's uh, that's pretty unreasonable if you ask me. Okay, so first thing, right, don't trade, don't chase breakouts. Okay, number two, don't trade into obstacles. So what I mean by this is that, let's say you are buying, right, you're looking for a long opportunity, you have to open up your eyes and see, right. And make sure that you're not buying smack into a swing high. You're not buying smack into a resistance. Why is that? Because if you buy into resistance, right, you know that resistance is where potential selling pressure could come in and push the price lower. So you're pretty much putting the odds against you. Okay, so don't buy into resistance. Don't short into support. All right. In fact, what you want to do is to make sure that whenever you buy, let's say you're buying, right, the, your entry point, right, to the nearest swing high or to the nearest obstacle, right, there's at least a minimum, right, of a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. At least the trade, right, there is some potential meat, right, for it to move in your favor before it face obstacle, before it reverse against you. And hopefully by the time, right, you could have, you know, exit with a profit already. Okay, so number two, don't trade into obstacles. Number three, let the market show signs of strength, right, before entry and let the market show signs of weakness before shorting. So what I mean by this is, Imagine, right, the price, let's say, on the daily time frame, it has retraced into an area of resistance. Do you want to be shorting immediately? No. Why is that? Because resistance is an area on your chart. You have no idea at which point it's going to reverse. Is it going to reverse at the early part of resistance? Is it going to reverse smack in the center of resistance? Or is it going to do a, a false breakout before it reverse? So you have no idea. So that's why I would rather you let the market show you its hand, right? In this case, you want it to show you sign of weakness, right? Before it revert, before you take a short trade. So how you can go about doing it is that you can use multiple time frame analysis. So for example, if what you have seen, right? A strong move into resistance is on a daily time frame, you go down to the lower time frame, like let's say the two hour time frame, okay? And on the two hour time frame, right? You will notice that as the price approach resistance, you should see a series of higher highs and higher lows. Okay, that, that is uh, most likely the case. And you don't want to be shorting just yet because you can still see a series of higher highs and higher lows. So let the market show signs of weakness. So in this case, right, what it will look like is a series of lower highs and lower lows. So let the market break that series of higher highs and higher lows first. Let it form right, a lower high and a lower low, and then you can consider taking a short trade. At that point in time, right, the market has already shown sign of weakness. It's at resistance on the higher time frame, right? And there's a much higher prob probability of the price you know, reversing lower from there. Okay, so number three is let the market show signs uh, of strength. Let the market show you signs of strength or weakness, right? Depending on your trading direction. And number four, set proper stop loss, right? Uh, often, right, traders, they just set their stops right below support, above resistance, and they wonder why they keep getting stopped out. And that's because, right, if you, again, if you are free right now, go to your chart, look at it, and notice how often, right, the price trades below support 
and then it get rejected and goes up higher. How often the how often the price trades above resistance, gets rejected and it comes down lower. That phenomenon right happens regularly. So this means if you put your stop loss right just beyond this level, you're you're asking for it. You're asking to get stop hunted. So what's the solution? Well, it's pretty simple, right? You want to set your stops away from market structure. So for example, let's say you are long, right? You're long at support, right? Don't put your stop loss just below support, right? Give it some buffer like, you know, 1 ATR below support, right? So this way, even if the market were to reverse lower, hit the lows of support, right? Your stop loss at least is not there. You will still be in the trade unless the price heads down lower and, uh, you know, really penetrating deep into support, right? Then that's probably where support is really broken and you should be out of the trade. So give your stops, right, some buffer, right? Ideally, I use 1 ATR above resistance and 1 ATR below support, okay? And that's it, right? Those are the four techniques that you can use, right, to help you avoid losses in trading. And that's it, right? I have come towards the end of today's episode. I will talk to you soon.